Good morning, Coach. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing okay. Doing okay. Uh, are you a coffee guy, Coach? I, I can't remember what you said last year. Uh, yes, I am. How do you take? How do you take it? Uh, straight black, just black. That's right. Oh, you, that's right, Coach. Why you guys like like prefer no flavor? Uh, well, how? Why? <gasps> Why would you? Why would you? Is it for diet purposes, Choppy? Or all black. Well, for me, I, yeah, it's like I don't want to have all that sugar. But I also think, Mike, and you can maybe co-sign with this. I think it puts some hair on my back. <laughs> oh well, if that's what you need, that's a good thing. That's not why I do it. I'm, I'm good. I'm good there already. So, um, <laughs> but, do you? Do you uh, I, I, yeah, there's just so much sugar in 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 you know in, in the other in the other options. So yeah, I used to. Put cream and sugar in there, and just uh, just learn to drink it black. And actually, and I enjoy the coffee more. I think you, you know, when you put all the other, you know, ingredients and supplements into it, it's you know, it, it kind of takes away from, you know, the actual coffee. So I, I enjoy. I enjoy. So you don't uh, you you don't put ketchup on your steak, then I'm assuming. <laughs> ketchup on my steak? No. No. Oh, okay. I'm missing yeah. out. Yep. Same. Yeah. Same thought process. Yeah, leave, <laughs> leave that for Mahomes. Uh, <laughs> Coach, do you feel do you feel cursed? Let's just get like go cursed. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I just think this is this is our game. I mean, it's uh, you know it it always goes this way at, at some point in a season. Um, I, I, it's not a matter of if you're going to you know face adversity. It's just really a matter of how much and when. And uh, and it's you know it, and it's been like that throughout. I mean, as an assistant coach, you don't you're not. I don't think you're really in tune with it as much. Uh, because you're, you know you're focused on on your box, your lane, and your group. But you know, as a head coach, when you're dealing with everything, you know you're obviously in tune with everything that goes right and everything that you know doesn't go so good. So um, yeah, this this is just this is how it goes. I mean, really, these injuries are they're unfortunate, um, and you know it's it's part of it. You just you know really, I feel bad for the individuals that have to go through it because you know how much work these these men put into this. Coach, how deflated like is the room? Is that is that your first challenge going in there and saying, "Hey, now this this just week one, we can get through this and we can survive this uh, with the, with the season just starting and all the excitement that we had going into it." Well, definitely. I mean, we're, we're you know we're human, so um, obviously, anytime you you don't win, it's uh, it's it, it's extremely disappointing. It doesn't matter who, who you play, where you play, and what time of year it is. I mean. You know, it's a you, you find out real fast uh, in, in the NFL how difficult it is just to win one game, and that's mm -hmm. you know that's every week. Uh, so um, you know, and, and there's so much that goes into it—the hype and that you know, especially you've been waiting the whole off season to to play your first game, and so you know, there's a, there's a, so much emotion that goes into week one, and you know, and I think that's why not only winning a game but getting that first first win is you know. It's de definitely a, a threshold you have you have to get over every year, but it's uh, it, it's difficult, but it's it's also very very rewarding. Coach Jerry came on with us on Tuesday and you know said you know not going to IR Dak, you know could be could be four weeks. Are you as optimistic about that timeline? Um, yeah, I, you know to be honest with you, I, I you know I get to see Dak yesterday and and what he was able to do, so. Yeah. I, I think I think we'll have a better idea, in, you know, going into week two of the injury. I mean, you know, you know how these the first seven seven eight days, you know, after after surgery, you know, you, you have to get past the, the healing stage, you know, before you can really, you know, really crank on it. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll let you know I'll let you know next week. <laughs> Mike McCarthy here on 105.3 The Fan Coach. Can you just give us a reset? of the traits of Cooper Rush and what he can bring to your offense? Uh, Cooper, very steady. Um, you know, obviously knows the offense in and out. You know, he's, he, he's been with Kellen, you know, in, in this in this system for quite some time. So um, he's he's definitely uh, someone we have a, a lot a lot of faith and, and confidence in, you know. And, you know, and, and he, his personality is, you know, something of a, a quiet confidence and, uh, but, you know, the guys really respond to him. Um, he, he's on top of his on top of his game. I, th I thought he threw the ball extremely well in yesterday's practice. So he's, he's put together a good week so far. You guys have uh, any deep or serious discussions that you can at least tell us about in terms of going to get another guy, or you knew it was going to be Cooper moving forward? Uh, no, we were. I mean, in my mind, it was it was Cooper. 
you know, moving forward. And then, then, then we got Will. So, you know, but yes, I mean, we, we've spent a lot of time. I know, you know, Will McClay and, and you know, Stephen and Jerry have, you know, talked um, a, a number of times about, you know, the, the quarterback position. And so, uh, but, you know, end of the day, we're, you know, we're about beating Cincinnati and, you know, Cooper is, uh, he, he has the football. Coach, just just curiosity. Let's just say you had thought about bringing somebody in. What is the timeline for a quarterback not in the system to get caught up to speed? Like, would we talk it be like three, four weeks before they even play a game? You know, yes. I mean, it depends if there's if they have history here, because um, you know, every, every it's it's not really this it's not really the scheme. You know, for 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 the quarterbacks, you know, because. You know, especially with their level, you know, whatever their level of experience is, because you know, conceptually, they're going to have footwork training that that fits concepts and and understanding. You know, it's it's, it's just really language. It's cadence is a big part that you know that they just have to get get in tune with the cadence that that's in place. Uh, but the you know the biggest the biggest challenge for the quarterbacks is is the communication. Mike McCarthy here on the Diamond Factory Hotline every Friday with Sean and RJ on 105.3 The Fan. How are uh, Jason Peters and Michael Gallup coming along, Coach, with their timeline? Uh, both doing well. You know, Jason did more. You know, we, you know we're on a steady, steady incline for, for workload. You know, just, you know, for, frankly, this is really his second week of training camp. Um, you know, it's, it's, to give you a comparable. And um, Michael, actually, I, I thought, Look really good. You know, he was in the, he, he did team, uh, teamwork yesterday. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have his reps right here in front of me, but uh, I thought Michael definitely take, took a big step yesterday. Do you expect either to play on Sunday? No, I, I don't expect either one to play on Sunday. Coach, what was your evaluation of uh, of Tyler Smith? We didn't seem to, to notice uh, his name get called too much, which seemed to be a good thing for offensive linemen and, and referees uh, from the opener. What, what did you think of Tyler's game one? No, I, I agree with your assessment. I mean, usually when you don't you don't notice, uh, you know, left tackle, he's played very well. So um, I, I thought he did a lot of good things. You know, and, and just you know, Tyler's you know like any other young player, he's you know, he's got to get into a rhythm, and um, you know, his, his footwork and hands and things like that, he'll just keep working, uh, but. You know he's he's got the physical traits and the tenacity and you know I, I love his I love I love his uh, you know his fight and his grit and so uh, he'll be fine you know he's just going to have to continue to grow because you know as as you know the weeks go on you know now people have film on him so mm-hmm. you know he's going to start seeing different challenges from you know each matchup that he has you know week in and week out. Uh, are, are you a best five on the O line kind of guy, or do you like to keep guys in positions where they've been, you know, most comfortable and and, and practicing? Well, I, I think it always helps to you know tilt the participation towards the training. I mean, I I think that's you know I, I think we all would like to do that. Uh, you know, particularly that's why you know when you bring a young player in, it's you know if you want to play multiple positions, then, then the next step is to try to keep them on the same side because you know the left side footwork coincides at guard with 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 the you know with the same footwork with the left tackle so I mean that's that's really the you know procedure of training that we look at all the time so you at least try to keep them on the same side so they can because you know it's so much about so much about footwork and uh, but yeah you definitely want and that's why you mainly draft tackles um you know I as long as last 20 years that I've been in the league um you know I, Every program I've been a part of, you know, you draft tackles and and move them inside. So, hmm. and that's uh, from a personnel acquisition perspective. Uh, so, it, I think it's important to, you know, those, those guys have a lot of carryover you know, from the tackle position. Coach, what was your evaluation of CD uh, on uh, on Sunday in terms of the you know, the kind of the star treatment, the number one treatment he got? Well, I mean, it's to to be expected, and you know, and that's something that we we just got to continue to give him, you know, opportunities, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, we we, we knew that going in. I mean, it's uh, you know, that's going to be a weekly a weekly challenge for CD, and and uh, you know, and hey, he's he's ready, and uh, you know, he, he talk about a young man that can. I mean, he's 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 a football player, and just um, in in every in every way. So uh, we just gotta we just gotta keep teaming it up for him. 
Uh, Coach Devin White off the Buccaneers said, oh, we we looked at last year and kind of knew what they were going to do. And, you know, uh, uh, they weren't going to commit to the run and run inside and basically trying to say, you know, some things were predictable. Is that something that could be said after every game or do you really look deep into that? Do you find that type of comment after week one alarming or at any point in time during the year when the opponent is saying, oh, yeah, we kind of knew what they were going to do? I mean, there's there's not a whole lot in this game that you can, in my opinion, find alarming after after one week. Um, you know, I, I get the the emotional um, component of you know, disappointment, and you know, for everybody, the fans, you know, trust me, we we were disappointed after Sunday, and I think when you get comments like that, there's, you know, anytime you have confidence in your plan, your plan, you, you feel like you had you know a beat on the other guy. You know, that's that's part of the game, uh, but at the end of it, it's really it comes down to execution, you know, and when you have the fruits of victory, uh, I guess that's one of them where you, you know, you have those, those, those type of, you know, comments, but I, I think it's just more expression of, you know, the confidence that they had in their plan and then they were successful. So uh, I, you know, trust me, so Scott is, uh, is a big part of what we do um, each, you know, in, in every aspect of the game plan. So, you know, that's, that's part of our you know, responsibility to, to be on top of that. So now, you know, some of the things we ran in the game, uh, you know, conceptually and, and play type wise, yeah, maybe they were a bit conservative, but, you know, but with the things going on with the young guys on the left side, I, I think some of that's understandable. Mike McCarthy here on the fan. We've been having some fun trying to come up with with comps for Burrow and Chase and this new this new duo uh, that obviously made the Super Bowl last year. What do you see in these two guys, Coach, that that make them really special uh, early on that you're going to face on Sunday? I'm sorry. You, you cut out right in the middle of the question. Sorry about that. Who, who, who are you asking about? Burrow and Chase. Uh, okay. what, what do you see jumping out from these guys early on in their career that, that makes them seem so special? Well, I mean, they were dynamic in college at LSU, so I mean, it's in, in really nothing's nothing's really changed. Uh, they they have a very strong connection. Uh, you know, Joe can make all the throws, he can extend plays. You know, he's aggressive with his decision making. Uh, his his deep ball accuracy is extremely impressive, especially for a young a young quarterback. And Chase can you know he can do it all. Um, you know, he has the speed to go over the top, and the physicality to contest a catch, and uh, you know they. That they both have tremendous confidence. Uh, you, you can see that there's a very, very strong connection there. Is this a matchup where where Diggs comes to you and goes, Coach? Just let me follow him. The star coverage. I'm, I'm telling Dan Quinn the game plan has has Trayvon uh, shown you that mentality when it comes to these types of matchups. Oh, definitely. I don't think there's a week goes by where you know Trayvon doesn't you know want, want to play that way, and, and you know. And AB is the same way. So uh, when you have that confidence at both corner, you know that's you know that's something you definitely take into your game plan process. I, I hate to beat a dead horse here, but uh, <laughs> I, I say this every day to myself. I wake up today, and and, and is Micah Parsons an edge rusher yet? <laughs> uh, but sixty uh, percent pass rush win rate last week, highest in the league. Uh, is this the best like pass rusher you've coached? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I think that, you know, when I, when, when I look at Mike and I just look at the impact that he, he makes from pure rush, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to be around some, some, definitely some great ones, you know, Hall of Famers. I mean, the last one up, you know, up there in Greenville was Clay Matthews. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, I think it's like anything in this game, you, you remember the first one and Derek Thomas was, you know, Ooh. I was with Derek in, in Kansas City and he, my God, especially for being a young coach. You know, just coming into the league. I mean, he was just so so dominant in the pass rush, uh, so impressive. And uh, you know, Micah has that has that impact. You know, that impact factor. And uh, you know, you know, but Micah can also do it from the second level too. So it's uh, yeah, he's he's an impact player to say the least. Coach, last one. We know how much you have emphasized it and how much of a topic it's been in terms of the penalties. Uh, your level of disappointment, how, how upset were you, were you with uh, the 10 penalties from the opener after all the offseason uh, emphasis and how much you talked about it last year? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, we evaluate that too, uh, you know, based off you know, our evaluation as, as far as what was called, what wasn't called. Uh, you know, we, we're, we were in a, I would say a solid spot, you know, 
you know, and the reason why I say solid is because of the pre-snap. I mean, this, the pre-snaps are inexcusable. Uh, we all know that. Uh, we work on it. We, you know, we, I mean, our our whole offensive line goes to our quarterback ex exchange drill. You know, that's you know, I, we, I've never done that before. So, you know, we're we're really emphasizing. The guys are working hard at it. And, uh, but they, you know, that that those are the little things with young players and and and. When you have change, particularly in your offensive line, that those are the little things that that show up, and you got to you got to stay on top of them so that, that they don't factor. Yeah.